uh, there were two other studies, right? There are two other HIF stabilizers. Uh, I'm going to try this now. Deprotostat or Deprotostat. I got both. I come over in my... my Deprotostat? Deprotostat and Vatodostat. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are two studies there, right? I think they're Japanese studies. What do they show? Well, we have information from these on uh, ASN presentations. And the uh, Deprotostat study really focused on looking at the safety of these agents. What they, what they focused on was, was it uh, increasing cardiovascular events or death. They took two RCTs or randomized control trials. One of these was an open label study. The other was a double blind study and they combined the safety data. They also focused on some concerns about activating HIF. Um, in that uh, if you look at HIF activation, say, within cancers, um, it may play a role in cancer growth. So the thought was, even though that's, that's very localized in the tissue, maybe giving this HIF stabilizer could be adverse. So they looked at ca whether cancer signal occurred. And also ophthalmologic problems. So um, in diabetic retinopathy, there's demonstration of HIF activation playing a role there. So they had patients get ophthalmologic exams. And lastly, of course, they looked at cardiovascular events. And, and what they saw when they combined these, which was over a thousand patients on either ESAs or the HIF stabilizers, was no ophthalmologic signal. Um, they saw adverse events in about 3% of both groups of patients. No uh, cancer signal less than 1% of patients were developing any cancer, having progression issues. And ophthalmologic exams did not detect any difference between the two groups. Interestingly, cardiovascular events were a little bit lower in the HIF stabilizer group at about 3% versus 6%. So that was the, the safety study using Daprodustat. Um, the other study by Nungako uh, was an efficacy stu study really looking at uh, Vatidustat versus Darby Poetin again. And uh, this showed that it was just as efficacious as Bob said, it works. So they looked at the, these non-dialysis patients. They're anemic. Um, some of them are anemic and on no therapy, they get put on either Darby Poetin or the HIF uh, or Vatidustat. They both have hemoglobin increases. They both achieve goal at 24 to 20, uh, 20 to 24 weeks. Some of these patients were already on um, uh, Darby Poetin and they would be re-randomized, either stay on it or go on the uh, Vatidustat. And again, it maintained their hemoglobin. So these drugs are certainly as efficacious as what we've been using before. So if I hear you correctly, they're efficacious or as efficacious and their risk profile is better than the standard drugs you've been using to date? And I would say we need more of these publications on these other agents, but the data to date is that they are uh, as safe or safer depending on the population we're looking at. Looking okay, at. if they're as safe, let's, let's leave it there, be very conservative. They're as safe and they're as efficacious, where do they fit? into the, 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 the armamentarium that you've got right now. In other words, when I hear as safe, okay, they're about the same. And if they're uh, as efficacious, okay, they're about the same. So what's the big deal? Why are they, why are you, I know you guys are excited. So explain to me why you're excited with these things. Well, let me, let me start. Um, so to Dan's point, he's correct. Uh, these are, are as safe and again, at least as far as Rafiduzstat, probably safer in some patients, but it starts addressing uh, the issues that we brought up earlier on our wish list, right? It's easier for the patient to take, it's more physiologic, you avoid high pharmacologic doses of ESAs that potentially are harmful themselves, it's easy to store, uh, you know, and on and on and on. Um, so, this is, has been licensed in Japan, Roxadustat has, and in China. And just looking at <clears throat> how it's being utilized there, it's a fairly steady uptake. You know, physicians tend to be very conservative. 
and they're they you know incremental information is going to be required for us to be comfortable but from a personal perspective i think this offers an option that serves our patients needs and has huge upside for us better understanding these small molecules there's data out there that actually we presented at asm that showed it may delay progression of renal function. So that's a huge hit, up to, I think it was 20, 25%. That's just enormous. It also significantly decreased uh, LDL cholesterol levels. Again, huge uh, opportunity there. So, so to Dan's point, you know, it, we expect FDA approval probably in December of this year, but we still have a lot to learn. But uh, I think it's a great opportunity for clinicians to to really start pressing this issue. So if I if I hear you correctly, in addition to all of the, the hemoglobin issues, it decreases progression of, of renal disease and improves your cholesterol profile. Yeah. Which may or may not spare you the, the, the use of a statin, for example. Those are big advantages.